Hello YouTube, Medley here with another video for you. Um, to be honest, this video has been a long time in the making. I have been very anxious about making this video and I've been procrastinating an awful lot. So um, those of you that are waiting for Autumn and Alora's story, I'm so sorry you have to wait just a little bit longer. I, I am going to do a video about their story. I've just been really apprehensive about it because their story has some racial issues and obviously I'm white and we live in a world now where racial issues have come to the forefront of our minds in a lot of ways and trying to be more culturally aware and not engage in cultural appropriation or any of those things. And so I've been really kind of nervous about telling their stories. Stories are how I understand the world around me. For as long as I can remember, I've told stories. I've acted out stories with my body, with my toys, with video games. And being in school, if we had to read a history book, it was so boring. Or reading about a natural disaster where a lot of people died and, and just feeling like, okay, that's sad. But, but if I hear a story about what happened, then it touches my heart and my soul and, and it affects me. In a, in a way that's so much more different than just reading about something. And acting out the stories helped me to understand the concepts behind the stories. And so I wanted just to talk about a little bit about my background, just so that you know, before I tell Autumn and Alora's story. When I was a kid, I really resonated with stories about Native American people. And I didn't really know why. But if people were wanting to play cowboys and Indians, I would always want to be the Indian um, or the Native American because I just, it felt like the cowboys were like the bad guys, <laughs> even though everybody seemed to think the cowboys were like the good guys. I don't know. I, I just always felt like people should be kind to each other. And in a lot of the stories about cowboys, it didn't seem like people were very nice. I often would pretend that I was Native American or when I learned about slavery in school, I couldn't believe that people would treat people like that. That people would, would chain people up and beat them just for the color of their skin. That was unfathomable to me. I, I, I just couldn't wrap my mind around why somebody would do something like that. And so... I would act out the parts of, of different people and to just try to understand what they must have went through. And that was a common theme in, in all of my stories. I often would play school by myself and I'd always play the part of the, of the bad kid because I tried really hard to be the good kid in school and to always do everything right. And I couldn't understand why kids would want to just misbehave so much and so when I would go home and I would play I'd pretend to be the bad kid to help understand their perspective and it did help me a lot it helped me to be kinder and more understanding of people that were different than me and that's just how I've always been stories are powerful to me Autumn and Alora's story does deal with some race issues and I've been feeling really apprehensive about talking about them because I'm white. And I think sometimes as society, we judge people without really knowing them. And we judge their intentions without really knowing them. No matter what the color of their skin is, people are always judging one another. And it's not very fair. And I think that stories need to be told. And... I really want to tell these stories despite my fear <laughs> because I think it's important for me to get them out of my head and into the world for better or for worse, <laughs> whatever people think. If there's mean comments or dislikes or whatever, I, I just have to be willing to take it because stories need to be told. And my stories are not true stories most of the time. I'll let you know when they are. Um, 
I've always enjoyed fiction because it gives me the freedom to explore different types of people in a way that I can't do in my regular life. One way I think people judge other people unfairly is you can't just look at somebody and know where they come from. I'm as white as they come <laughs> and um, but not everybody in my family is white and my mom's side of the family, um, her great grandmother was Pomo Indian and Mexican. And then her great, my great grandfather, her grandfather, he was Scottish. In high school, we were doing some family history research and things. And we found out that my great grandma was Native American. And we didn't know that before because she always said she was white. But my mom remembers her um, speaking Spanish to the neighbor lady. And my mom said, what? You speak Spanish? Can you teach me? And her great grandma told her, no. And that was that. And she never heard her speak Spanish ever again. And my mom didn't know why she spoke Spanish until we did the family history and found out why. And then we found out that she went to Carlisle Indian School, which was a boarding school for Native American kids. And reading about the school and learning what it was about, she went there to learn how to live in a white man's world and to get an education. My mom says she remembers her grandma telling her that she did what she had to do to get an education. And with all the things that have come to light about the boarding schools in the country and in other countries, I can't even imagine what she had to go through in order to get that education. And the way she felt compelled to live her life as a white person, even though she wasn't white at all, telling people she was white, marrying a white man, having white kids, and foregoing her culture, both her Native American culture and her Hispanic culture, so that her kids could have a good future. And it's so sad to me that she had to do that. And that, that a lot of that culture has been lost in history because she didn't pass it on. And I, I mourn that part of me that I will never really understand because we weren't raised with those things from her. We were raised as white people. It made my connection to Native Americans make more sense though. When I learned that, it was kind of like a, oh, that makes sense, you know? And when the Kaya doll came out, I was so excited. I couldn't get her obviously because I didn't have money, but I wanted her from the moment I saw her. And so seven years ago, when I had an opportunity to go down to Seattle to watch Weird Al live, he's awesome, I couldn't not go to the American Girl store. I wanted to pick out my own Kaya. I was so excited. And here she is, my Kaya doll. Living in Alaska, I don't get to go to the American Girl store very often at all. I think I've been three times. <laughs> in my life. So it's, it's really rare for me and a really exciting experience. And when I went to get Kaya, I was pulling out all the boxes and looking at all the Kayas and putting some in a pile of maybes and a pile of no ways. And I was trying to find the perfect one that really spoke to me. And then I reached back in the back of the shelf and as soon as I touched this box, my whole insides just like lit on fire. And I knew without looking at the doll that this was the Kaya I was going to bring home. And when I pulled her out and she was absolutely perfect in every way, I just couldn't believe it. It was the most incredible experience. And I'm so happy to have her now. And I hope that my great grandma, if there's an afterlife or she's out there somewhere that she can see that there are dolls that represent people like her now and that people are starting to understand the beauty 
of Native American culture. And I wish American Girl would do more because there are so many different tribes of Native Americans out there. My great grandma was not the same tribe as Kaya. And right now, actually, she's wearing a cuss buck because <laughs> um, I'm Alaskan and I just had to have a cuss buck and I thought Kaya was the most fitting to wear it. So she's wearing a cuss buck. But I, I hope that American Girl decides to make more Native American dolls and to show off the rich culture that was in this country long before white people came here. I hope all of you that watch my videos can understand that it doesn't matter what you look like. It matters what kind of person you are. And I want to be a force for good in the world if I can. So I welcome any constructive criticism that teaches me more about how to be kind and respectful towards the people that I'm inevitably going to be talking about in my videos. Because my stories are to help me understand the world around me. And I need to get them out there. Stories need to be told. And they don't need to stay bottled up in my mind forever. So the next video will be about Autumn and Alora. And I hope to see you there.